Hi, my name is Dale, I'm an applied AI engineer at Google, and as part of my job, I'm constantly learning new technologies. Now, I don't know about you, but when I'm learning a new tech, I always like to do it in the most applied way possible. So if I'm going to learn Kubernetes, I want it to be because I'm working on a project that actually requires I use Kubernetes. Now, machine learning is this completely new way of getting computers to do things, and most of us don't have a lot of experience with it. So it can be kind of tricky to even identify those projects for which ML is a good solution. So that's the goal of this talk. I want to give you a sort of a framework for spotting and then solving problems with ML. So let's take a look. I build apps powered by ML all day, and I find that they usually fall into three buckets. So the first one is being able to handle and search and deal with complicated data types, multimedia data types. What do I mean by this? I'm talking about images, PDFs, videos, audio files, anything that's more complicated than like a simple row in a spreadsheet. A couple of months ago, I realized that I was actually sitting on a perfect example of this type of problem that could be perfectly solved with ML. When I was born, my dad went out and he bought a video camera and he came to the hospital and he filmed me. And then uh, he didn't stop filming for like 27 years. So he collected hundreds of hours of family videos. And I knew that there were lots of moments in those videos that I wanted to relive. But the problem was all of the things I wanted to see were buried beneath hours of like uh, friends I didn't even know anymore opening Christmas gifts. And this is like a perfect example of why video is so difficult to work with. Without machine learning, how do you find a certain moment in a video? You have to have a human sit there and watch the whole thing, unless you have machine learning. So let me show you what I built. I built an AI powered family video archive. So I uploaded all of my family videos to Google Cloud Storage. And then I used a machine learning model powered by the Video Intelligence API. That's a Google Cloud tool for analyzing videos. And that tool does a bunch of different things. So it takes your video first, it uh, transcribes it. So anything anybody said in the video gets transcribed to text. Then it recognizes any text that might be on screen, like the date here, June 15th. And finally, it uses a computer vision model to see what's going on in a video. So if I show you like this one, I'm on the swing set and the vision model says, oh, this is a playground, there's an outdoor play equipment, it's a public space and so on. So as soon as I built this and I tagged all my videos, uh, you know, I had some memories in mind I wanted to find. So the first one was, I knew that when I was somewhere between three and six, my parents surprised, gifted me this sparkly Barbie bike, best day of my life, and I wanted to find it. So that was the first thing I searched for. And here it was, I found it. I found it somewhere. Do you want it? For this archive, finding this Barbie bike, it actually wasn't that difficult because there are lots of different things the model could key off of. It recognizes via vision that there's a bike in the frame, my parents are talking about the bike. That problem is easy. So I, mean, well, I wanted to try something a little more complicated. Could I find my first birthday party? So the archive could find not only my first birthday, but also my brother's first birthday. And I was really kind of delighted by this because what I realized is the way it recognized this was by actually reading the text off my cake written in icing. Happy first birthday, Dale. Same thing with my brother's cake. So, okay. So it found my bike and it found my first birthday. But what if I tried something more abstract? Like what if I wanted to find my very first steps? So I think it's this one, right here. There she comes. That's Dale walking. This is the first time she's taken major steps on this floor. So it worked. But what was interesting is, how did my query connect to this video? It had to be what my dad was saying. So he said, oh, Dale's walking. This is the first time she's taken major steps on this floor. But I searched for steps, so it wasn't a perfect match. And this is another really important part of what made this work. The text matching wasn't exact. It was this sort of fuzzy machine learning powered text search. More on that in a second. First, let me tell you how I built this. So first, I took all my videos and I uploaded them to Google Cloud Storage. Then via cloud function, I triggered a machine learning model to run, in this case, the Video Intelligence API which takes as input a video and then spits out a bunch of text, the transcripts for the video, the tags that were identified by vision. Take all that text, put it in the database of your choosing, maybe BigQuery in this case. And then you wanna implement some sort of smart text search on top so that you're able to find things without having to know exactly how people said them. Which brings us to use case number two uh, for machine learning that I use all the time. It is understanding language specifically through something called semantic search. 
So human beings, right? We have many different ways of expressing the same idea. I could tell you that I'm tired, that I'm sleepy, that I need to hit the hay, I could yawn. These all uh, express the same sentiment, even though I use different words. And the idea of using machine learning to understand language is that computers should be able to get this as well. They should be able to get at what you want to say, even if you don't use a specific set of words. The way that we solve this with ML is with a technique that's used all over the place called embeddings. Embeddings are a way of taking a type of data and finding a way to map them to space, uh, maybe a two-dimensional space, maybe n-dimensional space, such that points that are close to each other are similar. So in this case, we have a word embedding. And the way that these words are plotted in this two-dimensional uh, plot is that similar words are near each other. So jetpack doesn't have anything to do with Apple, so they're far apart. But a jetpack is kind of like a flying broomstick, and it's kind of like a cloud. So they're all close together in space. And then we can use an algorithm to say, OK, if these things are, have a close distance, then maybe they're related. And how do you calculate distance, by the way? Pythagorean's theorem, Euclidean distance, there are lots of ways that you can do it. Now let me show you how you might actually use this in an app. So here I have a spreadsheet full of uh, news article headlines. So imagine that I'm, uh, I'm a news company, and I want you to be able to search for a headline, and then I match it uh, intelligently. I'm going to use a tool here, which is a Sheets extension, an add-on, called Semantic Reactor. This is a tool built by Google Research to sort of help you prototype language apps. And what it does is, when I load it, it takes all of the headlines and it embeds them. It turns them into points in space. And then I'll type a query, and it'll compare all of these headlines in space and find the closest points. So let's say I want to find an article about fashion. I hit React. And the first headline that comes back is an article about Fashion Week. OK, so the words overlapped. That's simple. But what about the next one? A visual evolution of what we wear on planes from lapels to leggings. The word fashion isn't in there at all. But because of the way embeddings work and they're able to almost pick up on cultural associations, it understands that lapels and leggings and wearing all have to do with fashion. Same thing with the next article, which is Prince Harry really knows how to rock a casual look. It recognizes that this has something to do with fashion. So you can use semantic search uh, for this sort of like uh, fuzzy matching. This demo built in Google Sheets, actually on the back end, it's powered by JavaScript. It's powered by a JavaScript TensorFlow model, which you can download on the TensorFlow website, called the Universal Sentence Encoder module. It's actually one of the most popular models in all of TensorFlow. And the way that you use it is that you load it in your JavaScript app, you call model.load, you take your sentences, and then you call model.embed sentences. And what you get back is something like this. It's a set of vectors, or you can think of these as coordinates in space, so that you can then go and see how similar sentences or words are and build your own smart matching system. OK, third category. And this is a big one, because there are so many different use cases for ML. You can use machine learning to convert between different data types. And of course, I don't mean string to int. I mean image to audio, perhaps. So for example, I read a lot of research papers, which are usually PDFs, but sometimes I wish I could, you know, take a stroll and be listening to a research paper. So this is kind of right like an image to audio problem. First, you need machine learning to analyze what are the different sections of the document. This is kind of like a vision problem. So what is the heading of the PDF? Well, that's usually a block of text that's a larger font size and it's kind of near the top of the page versus the body text, which is smaller and near the bottom of the page. So you could use a vision model to identify these sections. If I were doing it on Google Cloud, I'd probably use AutoML Vision, which is a tool for building custom vision models without having to know how to code. Next, after I have those sections, I want to convert the image to text. You can do this with the Google Vision API. And finally, you might want to take that text and then speak it out. And you can do that with the text-to-speech API. And here's what the podcast sounds like. A promising path towards auto-formalization and general artificial intelligence. Christian Segetti. Today, AI systems are able to learn solving tasks that used to be thought of taking uniquely human capabilities until recently. OK, here's another idea. Uh, rather than going from PDF to audio, why don't you stay within a video but just translate the language? You could almost use AI to do an automatic dub, right? So these uh, pictures are all from YouTube. Whenever I do a machine learning project, I usually make a YouTube video that goes along with it. And I noticed that a lot of my viewers were in India. Uh, but I don't speak a lick of Hindi. So I wondered, could I use machine learning to automatically translate the videos? First step, transcribe the video, get what I'm saying in the form of text, then use the Google Translation API to translate that text to Hindi, and then use the text-to-speech API to play it back. And then you just have to take the audio file and overlay it onto the original video. Here's what that sounded like. Software developers, 
हम अपनी रॉक और शैली के लिए नहीं जाने जाते हैं क्या हम या हम हैं Now since I don't speak Hindi I have no, I have no idea how good that was <laughs> but I've heard it's not bad. Now I'll just give you one last use case for how you might convert data types using machine learning. And this one does require that you stretch your mind a bit. But sometimes it's not that you just want to go from one format to another, but some formats of data are just easier for programmers and computers and data analysts to work with than others. Like I mentioned that if you're looking through videos, it's easier to search through text than it is through video, right? And the same thing is true like for example uh, a couple of months ago I wanted to see if I could improve my tennis serve with ML. Uh so I went to the court and I set up a camera on a tripod and I took, you know, an hour of me hitting the ball. But the thing is if I want to do any numerical analysis on my serve, it's very hard to do that on a video file, right? It's just like tons of pixels over time it's very cumbersome. What would be much easier is if instead of a video I had maybe uh the position of my skeleton of my joints over time because if i knew for example where my wrist was and where my elbow was and my shoulder i could sort of calculate the angle of my serve and then say oh uh well my arm should be straight and it's not and in fact that's exactly what i did and i also used the video intelligence api from the first project and i used this pose tracking feature that you know sees a person in a video it converts it into their pose So we covered three use cases that I use all the time for machine learning, uh dealing with cumbersome data types to make them searchable, understanding language, and converting between data types. I hope now that you have these frames in your mind, you see ML problems everywhere and you decide to start solving them yourself. And if you do, I sure hope that you use Google Cloud AI tools. I've listed a bunch that I used in my presentation here today. And these are for the most part really user-friendly. They don't take any data science expertise and they're sort of plug and play. That's it. If you want to go a step further and start developing your own custom machine learning models, I would highly uh suggest you check out Vertex, which is Google's new platform just released for training, building and deploying custom machine learning models. It's also a great place to prototype building ML models. And if you want to connect with other machine learning enthusiasts, check out the TensorFlow forum which is just launched where you can chat with other ML practitioners and the TensorFlow team. That's all for now. If you want to know how to build any of these projects that I talked about, they're on dell on ai.com and on the Google Cloud blog and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.